Laura Kodura Kovesi stated her new European Public Prosecutor's Workplace, EPPO, was getting ready to battle authorized, authorized challenges, intimidation, and useful resource pressures as soon as it launches on June the 1st. The EPPO is a response to criticism that the 27-member bloc has dealt ineffectively with repeated fraud scandals associated to its funding. The chance has been uh, magnified by unprecedented deliberate coronavirus disaster spending and the strain to lavish it shortly to revive COVID-19 ravaged economies. So we're going to be talking to Tim Volans, who is an analyst with MacroDGAC. And Tim is coming to us all the way from Almeria, Spain. Tim, good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us on the Rise Exchange. Uh, I want to first ask you if you are, if you share in the optimism of Eurozone finance ministers about the economic prospects of the bloc? I, I do in the short term, definitely. Um, you know, the recovery from now is going to be is going to be strong. But, uh, but going forward, there's definitely more that they need to do um, structurally, really, with the economy. They need to they need to really uh, transform the economy with this uh, with this recovery fund now, you know, make it a more young, vibrant economy, you know, really work on the unemployment rate that they that they've struggled with structurally for so long. Um, I, I unfortunately don't have much faith that they'll, um, they'll achieve their goals, though. Ah, OK, because I was going to ask you, European Commission forecasts show the 27-nation bloc will reach uh, pre-pandemic growth levels around the middle of 2022. Is that re a reasonable projection in your view? Yeah, I think that definitely, that definitely is a reasonable projection, um, but purely because of the low baseline that they're returning from. Um, rather, than, rather than sort of indications of, of real growth going forwards, um, as I say, the, the, the sort of the same problems with the, the large bureaucracy, the, the misallocation of spending, that's, uh, that seems to be something that's just part and parcel of the EU in its current form. Mm, all right. Now, um, finance ministers, they're wary of not recovering as quickly as the US and China. Is that a valid concern for the Eurozone playing catch up on the recovery side? Most definitely. Most definitely, especially with the US. Um, you know, what we've seen this time is that the U.S. has gone out. They've, they've really stimulated their economy with these, uh, with these stimulus checks and the, and the big spending drive. Um, the, EU, the EU is just really trying to recover to that baseline again that they, that they were at before. There's no real plan, or certainly not a plan that's been agreed on. You know, the clues in the name recovery fund. It's not really bringing them forward in, in, into the future. It's just bringing them back to where they would have been, which wasn't wasn't sort of spectacular. You know, it was no disaster, but it wasn't a spectacular economy before COVID. And really, they're trying to recover just to that point. So, yes, I do think the concern, the concern is valid, particularly with the US, not so much with, uh, with China, because China has got its own problems. They're trying to sort of deleverage and bring the debt levels down. Um, so that's, you know, again, whether or not they, they stick to that or whether they realise they've got to keep the growth going by any means possible. Gotcha. Um, is another question. But yeah, the EU, the EU is struggling. Great stuff. The political situation in France and, uh, and Germany, heavyweights in Europe, how would you assess their impact on the bloc's trade relationship with China in particular? Um, well, at the moment with this, uh, they've been working for about seven years on this, um, this China investment agreement. And uh, sort of immediately, as soon as they look like they had light at the end of the tunnel, it's been, uh, it's been dropped. Um, because of the, the situation with the Uyghurs in uh, in China, there and the, the sort of uh, the forced labour and everything that's been going on there is now a big a big part of it. France and Germany really want to push it ahead and, and look beyond the uh, look beyond the sort of the, I think they want to trust China really to, to to deal with that, and they want to look at the business opportunities going forward more than they want to sort of deal with the societal level problems. But they've obviously been strongly led by Merkel in particular. Um, and Macron as well, obviously, in, in recent years. But there's, there's big elections coming up now. Exactly. You know, we've got Germany towards the end of the year. The Greens, the Green Party in Germany, have sort of come out of nowhere in the polls. They, they you know, they, they weren't even under consideration in the, in, in the last election, really. But now they're, they're leading in a lot of the polls. It's going to be interesting to see what happens if they do pretty well and those polls end up being accurate. Laura Kodruda Kovesi and her new European Public Prosecutor's Office preparing to battle legal challenges facing the 800 billion euro recovery fund. Are these part of the difficulties, uh, Tim, in, in, in ratifying the fund? Um, I, I don't really think they are. No, no. She's, she's there sort of um, almost symbolically, in my opinion. Um, it's not part of the overall ratification, but there, there has been allegations of misspending before, as I, as I said. So really what, they, what they're trying to deal with now is uh, 27 different countries 
that have all got their own vested interests. You know, I mean, if you take Hungary and, and Poland sort of on the, on the fringes in particular, Poland have actually just ratified it, but Hungary have got a very big uh, agreement with China that a lot of the other EU nations aren't very happy with, and they, they, you know, they've got a few other human rights situations of their own that a lot of the other EU states wanted to link to the, to the recovery fund and the disbursement of these funds. So you've got all of that going on together with each country's individual interests, uh, and it just takes a long time for everything to marry up and all of these agreements and compromises to be made because it's not a united block. You know, it's really... Uh, there's, there's sort of really three or four, four factions that you could mention there between the bigger countries, you know, and the more frugal countries in the north, the southern economies that are really need to uh, get their economies back going with the tourism in the summer. And, and obviously there's the eastern, eastern countries that are transitioning from the, the old sort of Soviet way of doing things. Fantastic stuff. Tim Volans, analyst at Macro Dijak, all the way from Almeria, Spain. Thank you so much for joining us on Arise Exchange. Got to have you back to talk more about the European markets. Really appreciate your time.